morning, it's Phil digging deeper and uh, we are headed up to um, get some work done today. I got one of my best workers with me, Simon. Say hi. Hey. <laughs> oh man, we're gonna have some fun today. So um, we are headed up to uh, do some work today on a number of things. And I do have to say, I'm a, I'm a little bit depressed today, uh, if I'm being honest with you, and here's why. Um, it is Monday, and I uh, put together a really, really nice video on Friday. We did a whole bunch of stuff. We went into uh, Quarry, uh, filmed a bunch of stuff there, filmed uh, Tail Dragon on kind of a mountain road, uh, doing almost some four-wheel driving. Uh, we. We hit so many bumps, we popped a pinhole in the radiator on the Mac. And um, anyway, it was kind of an exciting day. And it was snowy. It was real snowy and cold. Um, but we're headed down into Bailey, uh, Bailey, Colorado at the moment. So the depression is from the fact that it all went away. I put it in the computer and it said disk error and I lost it all. Plus, I lost a uh, family trip to Moab, which I got some really cool video and stuff there. So I don't get to share any of that with you guys, so a little bit disappointed. Anyway, uh, but we're gonna have some fun today, and I'll try to replicate a few of the things uh, we did on Friday, but we are today going to try to figure out why the Mac is overheating. Um, I'm sure it's uh, mainly caused because of the uh, the pinhole in the in the radiator not holding any pressure uh, But what while well, it's holding some pressure intermittently, so it'll be it'll run just fine And then it'll it'll heat up to like 240 and then it'll just drop back down to 180 uh, So anyway, we're gonna change out some fuel filters make sure those bad boys are nice and clean uh, talk to mark the mechanic about uh, trying to braze and fix that pinhole. It's up at the top uh, top corner of the uh, of the radiator, so it's not in the fins, as far as I can tell. So it should be it shouldn't be too bad of a fix. I don't think we're we're threatening having to get a new radiator, uh, but I don't want to jinx myself, so I probably shouldn't have said that. Uh, anyway, let's see what else. Go, go to a couple job sites and check some stuff out. We got uh, different locates happening. So for those of you who work in the industry, you know you gotta get your locates done before you can start on a job. And uh, comment down below if uh, if you guys are finding, like we have for the last couple of years, it takes forever to get locate. So here's the thing. There's not enough people to do the locations. And what I mean is to, to uh, check for utility lines in the ground, to locate utility lines. Um, which can be rather, a, uh, it can be a pretty decent project up here in the mountains because people, you know, uh, for good reason want to run their utilities like phone, uh, internet, different things under the ground out from the street to their house, which might be a 40 acre or larger property. And uh, so you don't know where it goes and the people bought the property um, from someone so they don't know where the line is. And so that can get pretty costly because we have to bring out a private locator and uh, they tell us how deep it is, where it runs, and uh, then, then, you know, sometimes I can actually change the cost of the project depending on where the line uh, is running. If it runs right down the middle of the road or their driveway, uh, etc., it can be, um, it can really get in the way and you didn't know that when you bid the job. So anyway, um, we've been, it's been really tough getting locates and technically you're, they're supposed to be out within three days to do locates. Uh, I think uh, last, last training class I went to, uh, they told me if they weren't out within like a week, then we could go ahead and dig and the liability actually falls on them. Um, I haven't tested that theory just yet. Uh, I imagine that would be uh, more complicated than it sounds. Like, hey, I, I blew a gas line, it's your fault, not mine. Um, I, I don't necessarily wanna do that. So on a couple jobs, we've had like two weeks, we've had upwards of a month, 
uh, where they haven't been out to do the locates, which can cause some real scheduling issues. You know, when you say, hey, we want to start that job next week, uh, and you call and locates and they don't come for a month. Well, the issue with that is if, the, if they do locate and they spray the spray paint on the ground uh, where the particular utilities are, uh, you only have 30 days. That kind of permit, I guess, um, is only good for 30 days once they do locate. So you try to time jobs where, okay, they're gonna come out this week, do the locates, and then I've got about a month to finish up the job. But when they don't come out for a month, or three weeks, or even two weeks, uh, it, it, it's a nightmare, it really messes up the schedule. So, you know, I don't know if you guys deal with that where you are located, um, but if anybody's looking for a decent job, I think working for uh, some of these locate companies out here in Colorado, especially in the mountains, would be pretty good. They're, they're trying to hire and uh, they pay, you know, pay pretty decent. And uh, we, need, we need more uh, people doing that and we need it done quicker. So anyway, uh, we're gonna have some fun today and uh, I'll just kind of show you guys a few things, introduce you to the area and uh, our beautiful, beautiful area of Park County, Colorado. County seat is Fair Play. We're about 30 minutes or so from Breckenridge to give you some perspective on where we're located. So um, yeah, let's get started on today. Here we come into Fair Play. Other than a couple of uh, dollar stores, we don't have any real chains here, and we like it that way. We kind of do everything we can to keep uh, keep the chains away. So even though Breckenridge is 30 minutes away, very very commercialized, uh, we don't really do that here in Fair Play. So. If if you like old school Colorado towns, uh, this is it. So Fair Play is uh, at this light. This is uh, Highway 9. Just head up there over Hoosier Pass. Um, some people call it Hoosier Daddy. But uh, anyway, Hoosier Pass is uh, gets you from Fair Play to Breckenridge. Not the thing a lot of people don't know is as I, as I talk about Fair Play, the show uh, South Park is based around this town here. I'm going down to South Park, gonna have myself a time. A Fair Play. Uh, maybe if we get a chance, I can take you in town and, and um, it's not much, but I'll show you the, the downtown area. This is where we're gonna be grading. So see, we got some potholes. I'm actually gonna bring an excavator, small excavator in here and dig to the bottom of these potholes. They keep having trouble with them. Uh, so if we dig to the bottom when we grade, uh, they will have less of a chance of coming back. So anyway, amazing day. This is by far the nicest day we've had. Uh, spring day we've had up here in Fair Play. All right, here's our here's our culprit, Matt. Been leaking. Uh, well, of course she leaks, but um, we have a leak in the on this top left side of the radiator and uh gosh it's overheating so i think all the the vibration and shaking maybe just uh created a pinhole leak right where the mount is which is not uh super unusual but anyway i'm doing everything else uh to it that i can to help with overheating besides uh fixing the pinhole which is going to be the biggest thing but uh just cleaning out the air filter it gets so dusty you know we spend 90% of our time out here on these dirt roads. So uh, this truck just gets beat up. I got a lot of people say, why don't you why don't you go buy a new truck? Well, because it would look like this one in a short period of time. I think I'd be wasting my money. It's cheaper um, just to have this one. So this is 1990 uh, Max CH613. Front bumper fell off because this is crazy i was riding down the uh riding down a gravel road super bumpy and when i got to the stop sign right before i pulled onto the highway the bumper fell off 
I didn't know it fell off. So I tried to go and the truck would not move. The tires uh, were hitting against. So I got out to see what I was hitting against. The bumper's laying on the ground. It broke off of these. Uh, broke off of there, you can see the metal where it fractured. The crazy part is, if, if that would have happened beforehand or after, you know, I'm doing anywhere from 45 to 65 on the highway. I, don't, I think I'd have blown at least one tire, maybe more. I might not be here today to talk about it. Uh, honestly, that's not a good thing to have happen. And so uh, I think God was watching out for me that day, whatever your beliefs are. Um, so yeah, that was, that was pretty wild. Anyway, uh, let's get to work on this truck. So here's our two fuel filters. Uh, 3219, 3216. So we will pull those off. There's a nice new starter there. Second one in about three months. See what happens when you try to start the truck in really cold weather. All right, you're getting up in there, Simon. You want to take those out? Take what out? These two fuel filters. diesel everywhere. Let's get this other one ready. A little more ready to go. Oh, oh, oh. It's always fun. No, this is not gas. Not gas. Diesel. Get it. It's always hold way more than you think. Yeah. yeah. This might be tricky. That's warm. Guess the engine heater's been working. Okay, we use some in this O-ring. Caps. I mean, you gotta be kidding me. The perfect example of how these make you spill more.
it's all over the place. Got to wash more clothes. Now let's do our best here. It's about a gallon of diesel between these two filters. Up here, it's a $5 ordeal. Yeah, maybe a half gallon, I guess. Sure seemed like I put a lot more in. All right, we're just gonna spray this uh, out with compressed air, get some of the dust out. Topped it off. Radiator fluid. Let me show you where that leak is. Right there. See that pinkish color? It's uh, it's the heavy duty um, coolant. So it's coming out of there. It's probably coming out of this flange. It's not bad, but you can tell when. It loads up, starts leaking out. Uh, it uh, shoots up to like 220, 240 PSI. You guys are dirty. There you go. Top it off with some oil. Got her all greased up, maybe a little bit too well. <laughs> uh, we'll top it off with some oil here. Look at this mud we run through. This is why I don't run a new truck. I'm always tempted when I see, I shouldn't say new. I don't have 300K to spend on a truck, but um, even like 100,000. Uh, with the way we beat this thing up. As long as I can get parts for it, I think I'm gonna run it. It's actually only got uh, 360,000 miles on it. It's pretty good. Most dump trucks like this have 1.3 million. Get some new uh, new rubber on the back here. Make sure you guys can see that, there we go. New rubber here, running a used tire here. You see how chewed up these things get. And look at that. There's your wind. It's the old fair play wind. Normal day. Air dryer's pumping out some oil. 
Oh, we'll just keep her limping along. So this is, this is Winnie. We call the big dump truck Winnie. Like as in Winnie the Pooh. And then uh, we have a single axle freight liner, FL80, Caterpillar engine in that. I think it runs a 3126 cat and uh, yeah. Anyway, that's the one we're running today since this one's kind of broken down. All right, got some work to do cleaning up this uh, excavator, cleaning out that diesel tank. We're gonna put a 12 volt pump on it. Uh, but you can see that Troy built uh, power washer. I think last season, somebody left some water, a little bit of water in the system. And it gets, uh, it's been recorded up here, minus 50. Coldest place in the United States. We beat out Minnesota like the last two years. Um, down there in the valley is the lake. Anyway, uh, it's really messy, kind of embarrassed, but uh, putting a new deck on, self project, never done anything like a uh, deck before. So it's taken a while and then winter time came right in the middle, so I didn't have a chance to get all the trash and old deck pieces out of here. But um, anyway, I put a new valve on this power washer, little valve on the bottom. I don't know what it's called. Anyway, uh, it did not fix the issue really. So uh, I don't know. Anyway, at uh, Sam's Club, they had a they had one on sale for like next to nothing. Kohler motor. Um, this is a while back, middle of winter. So I bought it, and uh, so we'll put this together, and then see if we can't make this one work a little better. We also do a little cleanup around here. That's the old uh, 1956 Massey Ferguson. That's the one we uh, pulled the trailer with in the 4th of July parade. So you guys will be part of that too. We get to see uh, from our view, it's pretty fun. As my grandpa used to say, I'm glad you got to see me. Now, um, I'm gonna go ahead and call this video. We just did some random stuff and I uh, wanted you guys to see where we're located, a little bit about the town and uh, just see you know an average day for me and uh, I always have normally one of my kids in tow so we homeschool whatever your opinions are on that and uh, but it allows us a lot of flexibility and I love it because I get to take basically a kid per day I have four kids and spend plenty of time with them so um, maybe you learned something from this video maybe you didn't but we've got a ton of cool stuff coming um, and uh, this channel is blowing up so thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Please, please like and subscribe.